Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Joan Fontaine and Mark Stevens in From This Day Forward. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Sixty years ago today, October 28th, the Statue of Liberty was unveiled in New York Harbor. Since then, millions of people have sailed beneath her upraised torch to a new life in a brave new world. Our play tonight, RKO's recent hit, From This Day Forward, deals with the most important of these millions, our own men in uniform returning to the problems and complexities of present-day America. It's a story of love and hope against the background of this changing and exciting world. And we're fortunate in having both stars of the picture. Joan Fontaine, one of Hollywood's most accomplished players, and Mark Stevens, whose spectacular rise to stardom heralds a brilliant future. I imagine all of us are thinking in terms of from this day forward, wondering what the future holds. But how many of you know that Halloween, which we observe on Thursday, was originally a day of fortune-telling and prophecy. It was a day when young girls especially resorted to many forms of magic ritual to find out when and whom they'd marry. Nowadays, I'm sure, young girls depend more on their personal attractiveness to win a husband, on the kind of complexion loveliness that Lux Toilet Soap Care can bring. And once you try Lux Toilet Soap and get acquainted with its form of magic, I'm sure that you'll depend on it from this day forward. On to our play, starring Joan Fontaine as Susan and Mark Stevens as Bill. Our curtain rises on Act One. It's mid-afternoon in New York City. In front of a large office building, a young man in uniform pauses before entering and turns to the girl at his side. Well, I, uh, I guess I better go on, Susan. Where will you be? Oh, I'll go and help Martha. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right, the moving day, huh? What you looking for? Well, that, that card they gave me at the separation center, I, I need it. You're supposed to show it to them when you go to the employment service. I, oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> well... Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, Bill. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Kiss. Oh. <laughs> That's better. Looks like you learned some bad habits in the Army. Why, well, I, uh, I sure didn't do much kissing. Well, maybe it was a good habit then. Oh, Bill, remember the first time you kissed me? I'm sure I remember. The time we took the Hudson River day boat up to Newburgh. Bill. Oh, wait a minute. I remember. It, it was the time you had a date with, with Victor Ballbrain, and you found out you didn't have a date with him at all. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was on August 21st at 10 o'clock. You're sure it wasn't 929? Uh-uh. Because I was wearing my blue silk and I snagged my stockings. And we were sitting in the club room with a Y and I said that you needed a haircut and then you got mad and <laughs> then you kissed me. That was the first time. You know, baby, you, you almost made me forget. Forget what? That's no time for memories. I better get going. Oh, good luck, darling. Thanks. And don't worry, because I know you're going to get a job, a good job. Sure I am. Don't you worry either. U.S. Employment Service. Mr. Hoffman, one moment, I'll ring. U.S. Employment Service. One moment, I'll give you information. I, uh, I, I beg your pardon? Yes? I, I want a job. Name, please? Uh, William Cummings. Your discharge paper? Uh, here. Uh, what kind of work did you do? I, I was a turd lathe operator. Well, you'll take this form, please, and fill form? out these, this paper. There are several <laughs> questions you'll have to answer. If you'll take it over to that table, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Forms. Fill out the forms. Always a form, soldier. Always some questions. What do you expect? You want a job? You gotta answer questions. Never ask, do you love your wife? Like to have kids? You ever been hungry, scared? How do you feel about things in general? 
Why should it? Just answer the question, soldier. Just answer the question. Hey, you sure jumped, Sergeant. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I did. It's only thunder. It's only rain. I sure hope so. Cool things off, maybe. Rain. You're home, soldier, and it's raining. Ah, rain's lucky. That's what Susie said eight, eight years ago, just before we were married. I remember her standing by the doorway. Rain's lucky for us, she said. Rain's lucky. Hey, get back in the doorway. You'll get soaked. Oh, who cares? Rain's lucky for us. Rain the day you came to New York, and it rained the day we met. Yeah, sure is coming down. Say, uh, maybe we better not go to Martha's, huh? Oh, Bill, she's just my sister. She'll love you. <laughs> You're afraid, too? Yeah, a little bit. The subway's just down at the corner. Let's run for it. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Come on, baby. Your family can't scare us. You sure picked a fine time to bring your bow, Susie. The apartment's a mess. Oh, we came to see you, not the apartment. Uh, Susan, I were wondering if you could take in a movie with us. Oh, I wish I could, Bill, but I can't leave this ironing. Say, where's Hank? Sleeping, naturally. Oh. Uh... I wanted him to take the kids to the park, but the rain Oh, it started... stopped raining now. Oh. Say... We saw the kids outside, gee, this while. Uh. Stay out of the gutter, you kid! Penny! <laughs> Who's that, Bob Beasley? Barbara! Who else? Excuse me a minute. Timmy, are you and Barbara playing in that gutter again? No, Mom, I ain't. Well, then what are you fussing at them for, Ma? I ain't fussing. I just told them not to go before they went. I thought you were going for a ride with Jake and Charlie. Well, Jake ain't here yet. Besides, they don't want an old woman like I going along. Oh, Ma, don't talk like that. My mother-in-law, Bill... You'll probably get a fine impression of me, but honest, someday I'm going to kill that dame. Oh, Martha. She lives upstairs, Bill. All day long, she sits at the window yelling at the kids. Yeah, Susie introduced me to her. You mean you've been up to see her? Uh-huh, from the street. We yelled, too. It's bad enough to live in the same house with your mother-in-law, but when she owns the building... Well, the minute Hank gets a job, we're going to clear out of here so fast. Oh, hello, Susan. Oh, so you decided to get up, huh? Uh, how can I sleep with you yelling out the window all the time? Well, Susie, is this the guy? Oh, stop it. Bill, uh, this is Hank. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Glad to know you, kid. Oh. And why don't you put on a shirt? What for? My underwear's clean. You might just pretend to have some manners. Hey, how about a little beer for our guests? It's in the icebox. Go and get it. Come on in the kitchen, Bill. I'll give you the lowdown on these two days before you get sucked in. <laughs> Excuse me, honey, if I keep on ironing. Do you like him, Martha? I wouldn't mind ironing if it wasn't... Do you for like these... him, Martha? Susie... Do me a favor. Think a good long time before you go and get married. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, I mean it. Of course, I want you to use your own judgment, no, I haven't but... heard that for a long time. Remember how it used to work? Yeah, I know. Susie, why don't you... Why don't I what? Why don't you learn something from Hank and me? Look at us. Well, why don't you leave Hank? Leave Hank? Well, he needs me. <laughs> and you need him. And you love him, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, sure I do. But that's got nothing to do with you. You're different, Susan. I don't know. It's so hard to figure out. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Nothing like a good glass of beer. You know something? I'm glad it's Sunday. I don't have to go out and look for a job. Now, well, what was that you were saying? Oh, nothing important. I, I, I Say, uh, how did you and Susie happen to get together? Oh, well, we met at the... Well, uh... now you take Martha and me. We both had jobs at the same factory, making cardboard boxes. You and Susie going to get married? Well, we haven't... Martha had an awful time deciding about us. But finally, she says, okay, and she gives up a career, and we done it. Susie gonna quit the bookstore? Well, you know, we talked about... Oh, don't let her do it, kid. No, sir. Well, drink up, kid. Mazel top. Ah, say, you're a great little talker, ain't you? Oh, oh, sure. So are you. Huh? Oh, <laughs> Your job, Susan? Uh-uh, not yet. Oh, your room at the YW? Uh-uh. Isn't much of a life, is it? Martha! But just don't go trading it in for something worse. Oh, I guess I haven't got any right to go bawling you out. Oh, I sure you have, Martha. You got a reason. But I don't see why you're so worried about Bill and me. Hey, Martha! What is it? I see the way he looks at you. Hey, and I... Martha, did you know that Bill here is a machinist? Well, I, I've been... Well, one... He works at Tartlade. You know, he brought his micrometer from the shop once and he measured my hair. My hair measures 1.2 thousand. I guess you don't like a trade like that overnight. Yeah, I guess you he don't. He sets up lays, too. Me? I'm going to get a chicken farm. Oh, sure. Now, look, you take 100 chickens, Bill. You give them the benefit of the doubt, and they knock out 50 eggs a day. 
At the end of the week, you got 350 chickens. And at the end of the year, huh, you're lousy with them. Then all you do is sit back and watch them wait. You get the picture? Yeah, but first you got to get the job to get the money to get the chickens. Try getting that picture. All right, sure. But didn't I just read in the paper that instead of 8 million unemployed, there's really only... Hey, mama, mama, Uncle Jake says Bob and me can go in the car, too. Can we, Mommy? No, it's too close to supper. But I want to go. I want to go. Oh, you always born. It don't make no difference to me, Mom. But Barbara might get upset and be sick. Like she does when she don't have her way. Huh, Barbara? Timmy. I just said she might. Oh, let the kids go, Martha. Oh, well, but get in there and wash first. Okay. Come on, Barbara. You see, I told you. I, uh, I think maybe we better begin along, too, Susie. Oh, so soon? Yeah, I guess Say, so. Bill, I hear you're studying to be an artist. Now, wait a minute, Well, Susie, it's supposed you... to be a secret or something? <laughs> well, you'd think so to listen to Bill. Oh, I, it's just that I'm not much good at it yet, and it's kind of silly to talk about it. Well, uh, what do you say, Susie? Well, bye, Martha. So long, sis. Don't forget what I said. I won't. Thanks for the beer, Hank. Just don't do nothing I wouldn't do, you lovebirds. Goodbye, Terry. Bye, Barbara. Bye. Hey, Susie. Yeah? Maybe I'll come in that bookstore and buy a book someday. Yeah, why don't you, Hank? Martha, the kids can read it to you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've been so busy walking, I, I never asked you. Did you like the movie? Oh, it was all right, I guess. Liked it. Bill, let's stop here a minute. Okay. You know, whenever I take a walk, I like to stop here. And why? Because you once painted a picture of this. Bridge over the Harlem River. And tonight, it's just like it was in your painting. Quiet and dark, and the river glistening down there. And what? Um, one lonely star in the sky. <laughs> yeah, first star. Go on, make a wish. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, I wish, I wish it'd come true tonight. What'd you wish? Oh, that every day was Sunday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Susan, a guy's got to be practical. A guy's got to try and look ahead. Yeah. A guy's got to depend on a job for a living. What rights he got to think of marriage? What right? Well... Supposing he loses his job. Well, I know you're, you're thinking of Hank, aren't you? Hank and my sister. Mm, no, no, not especially. Besides, they were that way because the heat, maybe. Yeah. It's been hot today. You should see him in the wintertime. All right. Take Hank, then. I, I don't get it. There's a guy with a wife and two kids and no job. Can you imagine how he feels? He, he must be sorry he ever got married. Martha loves him. Oh, that makes it even worse. I don't know what they expected. Or what they got handed to them isn't much of an argument for marriage, is it? Is it? Oh, Susan, how can I be sure of anything? How can I promise a girl security or guarantee her happiness? Bill, do you love me? Yes. Are you asking me to marry you? Yeah, I, I guess I am, since you put it that way. I, I guess I am. Are you surprised? No. Gosh, I, I never thought it'd be anything like this. Hot Sunday night, High Bridge in the Bronx. That's all I've got. Maybe there's not enough, but you'll make a beautiful bride, Susan. All brides are beautiful, because they're young and full of hope, and they're kind of all shiny inside. Martha was a bride once, <laughs> even old Ma Beasley. Yeah. What else can I say, that, that I love you? I've said that. Well, what, what are we waiting for, Bill? Are you afraid? <laughs> yes, Bill. So am I, baby. So am I. When you got married that week, the heck for the future, we said. Why shouldn't we do all right? Yeah, why shouldn't we? Except now, today, in 1946, where am I? Looking for a job, filling out forms. Questions, more questions. Afraid to go home, almost. Afraid I... I remember our first home in just a tiny apartment. I was swell. I remember what Susie said. Isn't it wonderful, she said, to have a place where you can lock the door and... Lock the door and it's all ours, all ours, Bill, and nobody else's. That's all I thought about all day, Susie, about hurrying back oh, home. Bill, look, a wedding present for my boss. A book? Uh-huh, an entire book on how to make good coffee. Oh, after all the years you worked in that bookshop, you'd think Higgler would oh, give you something. Bill, he was very nice, and didn't he give me three whole days off on our honeymoon? Well, pretty soon, maybe we can tell him to find somebody else. I don't like my wife working. Oh, darling, I thought we weren't going to talk about that anymore. Yep, that's right. 
Say, uh, Susie, what would you do if you had 25 bucks? Oh, buy a house maybe or a car. No, I mean it. What would you do? What are you talking about? Oh, how do you like that? I come home with 25 bucks and my $25? wife... $25? Not only that, I got a letter from the boss. Bill, you didn't. Sure, here. Go on, read it. Dear Mr. Cummings, on behalf of the company, may I extend felicitation on your recent marriage. Remember now as you work that you have three mouths to feed. Three? Go on. Yours, your wife's, and that of the J.J. Wilson Machinery and Engineering Corporation, J.J. Wilson President. Okay, where's the check? Right here. It says, paid the order of William Cummings, the sum of $25, to buy something special for Mrs. Cummings, like, like a new dress. Oh, no, you don't. We're going to buy you a drawing board. I, I got a drawing board. I mean, a really good drawing board. Susie, we're going to buy you a dress. Drawing board. I got a drawing board. I got a dress. Now, look. I... Uh, <laughs> well, how about a, a, a savings account? We'd get one of those little books, and then each week we'd... Hey, and another thing, J.J. Wilson's got his eye on you. Huh? Sure he has. He sent you a letter and a check, didn't he? Oh, honey, he's got 3,000 men waiting for him. And they all got letters and checks? Of course not, but... Well, you see, it's like I said, J.J. Wilson's got his eye on oh, you. Oh, Susie, baby, I, I've never even seen J.J. Wilson. The foreman gave me the check. Well, Mr. Wilson knows you got married, doesn't he? It's on my file. It's routine. Well, he sent you the letter. Yeah, spelt my name wrong. Well, the point is, you got a check from J.J. Wilson, and Bill, I'm so proud of you, and I love you, I love you. Oh, someday you'll know who I am, Susie. Someday he'll spell my name right. Well, how are you doing, Sarge? I, I'm stuck with this thing. Well, I'm uh, kind of working at it, Lieutenant. You having trouble? Oh, uh, you shouldn't miss. Say, that's some list of jobs you've had. Uh, you seem to be having a little trouble, too. <laughs> I know I am. I, I know who I am and where I live and what race I am. Those questions I can answer. Ah, that's where I stop. There's no space on the form to say what you'd like to do. You see, I never worked before. Well, maybe you learned something in the Army that... Yeah, learned to drop bombs. Yeah, but that's no trade. Yeah, I guess a fellow's really out of luck until he learns some trade. Then he's safe. Hey, like you, for instance, turret lathe operator. I sure wish I could do that. Oh, you'll do all right, Lieutenant. Yeah, sure. I'll do all right. He thinks the guy's safe. He's got a trade. Well, keep telling that to yourself, Bill. Sell yourself on that. You're safe. You're safe. Yeah, but things happen that are bigger than the guy or his trade. You're a bombardier. War's over. No more bombs. Or, or you're a turret lathe operator. And there's a depression. No more jobs. The day they hand you the pink slip, you'd... Rather do anything than go home and tell your wife. So you stop off and buy a drink. You buy another and another. Hello, Bill. What do you mean, I'm drunk? Now, Bill, I'm not mad. Good. And I don't want to be a nagging wife. Good. And I don't expect to know where you are every minute of the time, even if it is half past 11. Good. And I don't want you to feel tied down in any way. Good. Will you stop saying good, Bill? Good. Now, you knew Martha and Hank were coming here to dinner, and you knew I'd made a special dinner with stuffed peppers and everything, and how do you think they felt? How do you think I felt? I thought you were sick, or you had an awful accident or something, and you come home like this. Okay, so I'm drunk. Oh, so I'm, what about you're it? You're drunk as an old goat. Go on, go to bed. No. What's that box? It's my toolbox. What'd you bring it home for? That's what it is, my toolbox. Along to my father. Made it himself. Gave him before he died. It's beautiful. What'd I say? Come on, what'd I say? What do you mean? When I proposed to you on the bridge that night, what'd I tell you? You said you loved me? Yeah, yeah, what else? Well, that you wanted to marry me. Yeah, go on. Well, you said you couldn't promise me happiness. That's right, what else? I guarantee security. I did, and I was right. I'm always right. Remember that lovely little letter I got from J.J. Wilson? Bill. That's the day I got another lovely little letter. Only this time he didn't single me out. All the boys got one. Let me see it. Now, no, sit down. I'll read it to you. Dear Mr. C oh, you read it. Dear Mr. Cummings, owing to circumstances beyond my control, J.J. Wilson Machinery and Engineering Corporation is forced to curtail its production. Therefore, I regret to say your services are no longer required. Well, now you know. And he spelled my name wrong. Come here, Bill. Oh, Susie, Susie, I lost my job. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it's going to be all right. Maybe better. 
I've still got my job, and we've saved some money. I... Oh, 35 bucks. Well, my salary won't go far either, but what are we supposed to do? Break down and cry? Well, I'm not gonna, see? You still got your trade, and you got your tools, and you got me. Oh, Susie, it's just that I love you so I... Oh, well, then kiss me. And our honeymoon's over now, isn't it, baby? Listen, Bill. All it takes to make a honeymoon is just you and me. Do you understand that? Yeah, I... I understand. Well, don't ever forget it, Bill. Not ever. In a few moments, we'll bring you act two of From This Day Forward, starring Joan Fontaine and Mark Stevens. Here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. What's new and exciting, Libby? Well, for one thing, Mr. Keeley, this afternoon I saw Paramount's exciting new picture, Two Years Before the Mast. Charles Dana's classic tale of adventure aboard a sailing ship in 1834. Life at sea was a bit rugged then, wasn't it, Libby? Oh, that's understating it, Mr. Keeley. And while the picture was being filmed, life for the cast was rugged too. You know, they built a full-size reproduction of the ship, complete with 90-foot mast. Mm. I watched Alan Ladd and William Bendix shinny up that mast to furl the sails during a raging studio-made storm. It was breathtaking and really dangerous as well. And the love interest? Oh, very exciting. Paramount brought Esther Fernandez from Mexico to play the feminine lead. Mm, Mexico's Academy Award winner. Mm-hmm. She's known and admired throughout Latin America. And uh, she'll make a hit with American audiences, too. She's quite lovely. How did she like us, north of the border? Oh, very much, she told me. One thing that made her feel quite at home, and uh, this will interest you, Mr. Kennedy, was finding Lux toilet soap in her studio dressing room. It's her favorite beauty aid, she said. Well, Lux soap's a passport to beauty anywhere, Libby. And Esther Fernandez is a beauty, isn't she? In those gorgeous costumes she wore in two years before the mast, she made a delightful contrast to those seafaring characters Alan Ladd and Brian Donlevy. No, she's a real Latin beauty, all right. Dark hair and eyes and smooth olive skin. A real luxe complexion that's especially lovely in close-ups. No wonder so many famous stars depend on active ladder facials. Why not? It's a beauty care that's simple, easy, and effective. Here's all you do. Smooth the creamy Lux soap ladder well in, rinse with warm water, then cold, and pat with a soft towel to dry. A daily care that really makes skin softer, smoother. Recent tests by skin specialists proved it. Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time with gentle Lux soap care. Why don't you try this fine white soap? Remember, Lux toilet soap is Hollywood's own beauty soap. Mr. Keeley returns to the microphone. Uh, we continue with Act Two of From This Day Forward, starring Joan Fontaine as Susan and Mark Stevens as Bill. <laughs> At the U.S. Employment Service, Bill Cummings still pours over the printed forms he must fill out in order to apply for a job. And his heart pounds with despair and desperation. For Bill remembers another time when he was out of work, and one evening in particular, that started when he called for Susan at Mr. Higgler's bookshop. Are they much longer, Susan? Oh, Bill, we're just closing now. Hey, Bill, any luck? No. Oh. Well, I'll just get my things. Is it all right if I leave, Mr. Higgler? Oh, yes. Run along, Susan. Ah, uh, Mr. Cummings, how are things going with you? Any luck? Nope. No job yet? Nope. I see. Well, good night, Susan. Good night, Mr. Higgler. Bright and early in the morning. Don't forget. I won't. Does the whole world have to know I'm out of work? Bill. Oh, Martha phoned. Yeah. Can you find anything? No, she wanted to know if we'd take care of the kids tonight. Why not? Well, come on, then, Bill. We'll have some supper and go over. Hey, Ma. Ma, will you kindly open the window up there? What do you want? Hey, Ma, will you lend me a buck? No. Me and Martha are going over to Jake's to hit him for a loan. We got to get there, don't we? Who's staying with the kids? Bill and Susan. We're waiting for them now. Ma, how about it? Nothing doing. Are you Hank? Oh, hiya, kids. You get a job yet, Bill? No. Hey, you see, Ma, he ain't working either. I guess that makes us tramps, Bill. 
Lovely woman, my mother. Got 6,000 bucks cash up there in our heart like a gangster. So you're going to take? Fine thing. Hit my brother for a loan every couple of weeks. Oh, here comes Martha. No luck with the old lady, Martha. Well, I got enough for car fare one way. We can... Oh, hello, Susan. Hello, Bill. Hi, Martha. The kid's upstairs? Yeah. It's awful to rush off like this, but we promised oh, Jake we... Go on, run along. Swell of you to do this. Oh, the kids have had supper and they're ready for bed. If they're still hungry, there's some dried prunes in the sink. We'll be back early. Don't worry about anything. Thank goodness for Jake, huh? Yeah, I'd rather work for it, though. Oh, well, you can't have everything. Come on, Martha. I want another kiss, too, Aunt Susie. You gotta kiss me, too. Oh, well. There, Timmy. Now, Uncle Bill and I'll be just outside. Gee, I sure hope that can put the bite on Uncle Jake tonight. Yeah, so do I. Now, go to sleep. Aunt Susie? Oh, yes, darling? Could I have a drink of water? Now, you've had two already, and I'm afraid that... Oh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Oh, well. Yeah, I guess I would at that. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Go to sleep now, won't you? Good night. Good night. Good night. What do they want? Oh, nothing. Just stalling. Good night, Uncle Bill. Good night. I don't know how Martha does it. No, swell kids, though. They're wonderful. Oh, Bill... Wouldn't it be something if... Timmy! I can't sleep. Now, this is an outrage. But I gotta talk to Uncle Bill about something. Well, Timmy, what is it? Well, you see, Uncle Bill, if you... Well, I can get your next meal for you. <clears throat> what do you mean? Timmy, come on, you got... Oh, wait a second. Go on, Timmy. Well, I heard Mom telling Papa you got canned from your job and that you didn't know where your next meal was coming from. And I thought... Well, I thought I'd get it for you, Uncle Bill. How? Oh, it's <laughs> easy. I do it for Pop all the time. I just go to the butcher and tell him I want a bone for my dog. I bring the bone home and Mom makes soup out of it. I can do it for you and Aunt Susie tomorrow. It's real easy, Uncle Bill. You bit people can't do it. It takes a kid. Doesn't the butcher ever get wise? Nah, anyway. Anyway what? He knows I ain't got a dog. Well, thanks, Timmy. I I, I appreciate your, your offer very much, but, well, uh... You got a little wrong. Your mom was kind of joking, see? Mom don't joke about that. Well, this time she was. Pop, yeah. But Mom, no, sir. Look, Timmy, you, you, your mom was just joking. I, I I lost my job, sure, but... Well, well, what I mean... What do you mean, Uncle Bill? What? What, what Uncle Bill means is he's, he's going to find a job right away. And you're not going to have to worry about it, see? And everything's going to be fine, Timmy. Fine. I figured you was going to be like Pop, and I wanted you to... Yeah, we know all about it, dear Mom. Let's go to bed, shall we? Okay. Just so long as you know, Uncle Bill. I'll tuck you in again. Good night, Uncle Bill. Good night, Timmy. And Susie, uh, I'm sorry if I made Uncle Bill feel bad. Well, Timmy, look. Everything's going to be wonderful, see? And Uncle Bill's going to get a job, and your father's going to get a job, and you're never going to have to worry about getting soup bones from the butcher. You can have steak to eat all you want, see? And you can have a dog, a real dog, and... Gonna have steak too. Yeah, Aunt Susie, sure. Don't cry, Aunt Susie. Well, I, I just, I just don't, don't cry, cry, Aunt Susie, please. Employment service. Just one moment. Employment well, Sergeant, you've answered all the questions. Well, there's one I didn't answer. Which one is that? Oh, you have to answer it. Well, I'd rather not. But it's regulations. But I'm not going to answer it. Well, uh, you don't seem to understand. That's that the trouble. I do understand. That's why I can't answer it. Well, well, you better talk to Mr. Hoffman then. Okay, I'll talk to Mr. Hoffman. Well, that's his office right over there. Thanks. Excuse me, are you Mr. Hoffman? What's the trouble, Sergeant? Well, I've been trying to talk to that girl out there. She keeps saying, fill in the form, fill in the form. I can't seem to get through ahead what I'm trying to say. Finally, she said I better see you. Sit down. Let's have your paper. Yes, sir. You see, if I do answer this particular question, it might keep me from getting a job, and I need a job. Which question is that? Well, I, I better give it to you straight. I have a police record. Oh? Let me see that form. You see, I, I used to do a little artwork, and my wife, well, she was working in a bookstore, and her boss, Mr. Higler, well, it seems he wrote a book, and he was looking for someone to illustrate it, and one night when my wife came home, she... Look at 
it, Bill. It's a check. Fifty dollars. Fifty bucks? Are you going to give you a bonus? Bill, look who it's made out to. To me? But mm -hmm. what for? Oh, because you're a great artist, because you're my husband, because I love you. Oh, darling, don't you see? I told you about that book he'd written, Mr. Higgler. Well, he wants you to do some sketches. What? You've shown him my work? Of course, and they convinced him just like that, Bill. He's going to pay me fifty bucks to draw? Oh, no, that's just an advance. The full price is three hundred dollars. Three hundred? Three hundred dollars, Susie. We're rich. Oh, it's even better than that. Your drawings, Bill, in a book. Oh, darling, darling. Oh, what do we do first? I mean, when you're a famous artist, I know we'll build a house—not a big house, a medium house, but big enough for Joe's boyfriends. Joe? Uh -huh. Our daughter, Johanna. She'll be the oldest. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, Susie, you don't know how scared I've been. I just didn't know where to turn next. Say, by the time I finish the drawings, maybe I'll hear from the union. Maybe they have a job for me. When does Higgler want his drawings? In three weeks? Why, that means my husband is earning $100 a week. Hey, that's not bad. That's no. not bad at all. But what connection had all that with the police record, Tarzan? Well, I, I did the illustrations, characters, pictures mostly, and the, and the, the book was a biography. A biography of Judah R. Upton. You've heard of Upton? Who hasn't? Well, Higgler published the book himself. He still owed me over $200, which I never got. I don't know why. You William Cummings? That's right. I'm from police headquarters. I have a warrant for your arrest. Warrant? What are you talking about? You illustrated a book by Gordon Higgler. Oh, what about it? Mr. Upton's filed a complaint. Criminal libel. Libel? But I... Well, I, I've never even read the book. Higgler wouldn't let me. My husband only drew what Mr. Higgler asked him to. How could he You'll know that... You'll have to come with me, Cummings. Oh, uh, if I were you, Mrs. Cummings, I'd call in a lawyer. Oh, he's right, Susie. But who? who, who? Uh, Hank's brother. Try to get hold of Jake, Susie, right away. You gotta relax, Susie. I told you a dozen times. Jake, where's Bill? Where? They got Higgler in there now before the magistrate, and as soon as they're done with Higgler, they'll bring Bill in. Are you sure they'll let me in the courtroom, Jake? Of course they let you in. And look, Susie, all I want you to do is smile and look sweet. Would you think Bill was a criminal? Susie, I just spoke to Mr. Yagan. He's the assistant district attorney. He says to plead guilty to being an accessory. He'll get off easy that way. Guilty of what? He didn't do anything. Jake. Uh, uh, yes, George. That's the bailiff. Who? The judge is about through with Higgler. The defendant, Gordon Higgler, is hereby held for action of the grand jury. Bail is fixed at, uh, what is your suggestion, Mr. Yegan, on behalf of the people? $1,000, Your Honor. $1,000. Next case. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to make a recommendation in this next case. I'd like to suggest that the charge be changed to accessory to a criminal libel. For what reason? Our investigation has disclosed that the material charged to be criminally libelous was editorial content, Your Honor, and not the illustration. Very well. Where's the defendant? Uh... Yes, sir. William Cummings? Uh, yes, sir. You're represented by counsel? Uh, counsel. Do you have a lawyer? Jacob Beasley, Your Honor. Oh, yes, sir. How do you plead? Well, I... Uh, you see, my lawyer... How he... do you plead? Well, I, I just don't know, Your Honor. Guilty or not guilty? Your Honor. Yes, who are you? Oh, I I'm his wife, and I just wanted to say that... Quiet now. <laughs> If you have anything to say, young woman, this is neither the time nor place. I'm terribly sorry, Your Honor. Susan, you gotta keep quiet. Let me alone. Your Honor, he didn't do anything. I got him that job. It's my fault. He didn't do anything. Well, if you didn't do anything, Mr. Cummings, how do you plead? You're charged with being an accessory to a criminal libel. Guilty. Mr. Yegan? The people will accept bail of $500, Your Honor. $500 bail. But $500. Next case. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll take care of everything. Oh, you better wait for Bill and me out on the street. We won't be long. It's like I was just telling Bill, Susie, in a few days there'll be a hearing, see? Bill gives him the facts. He had to make a living, see? He didn't know what kind of a book it was, see? Higgler told him what to do, and he did it. Yeah, but what do they do to Bill? Well, you don't judge Bill, say, don't do it again. Jacob! <sighs> Come on, I'll ride you home. No, thanks, Jake. I, I think we just soon walk. Okay. Take it easy now. Susie, I... Oh, Bill, it was all my fault. I hadn't shown your drawings to Mr. Higgler. I'm stuck. Like I've got to get a job, Susie. I've got to get a job. Well, how did the case come out, Sergeant? 
I was like Jake Beasley said, Mr. Hoffman. Suspended sentence and probation. Then what in the world are you worried about? Now, where's that form? Here. Now, where it says, what kind of employment were you engaged in then? Just put down artist. Employer, self. Rate of pay, $100 a week. How's that? Oh, that, that's swell, Mr. Hoffman. Now, take this outside and wait for an interviewer. Good luck. Thanks, Mr. Hoffman. you in just a minute, Sergeant. Oh, oh, the time you don't account for here on the farm. You were unemployed then? Oh, yeah. Do you want me to put it down? Uh, no, that's all right. We're not concerned with that. We're not concerned with that. Sure, lady, why should you be? You get your own problems. Or yours to me, or mine to you. Births, deaths, anniversaries. Anniversaries. Susie and I, we, we spent our first anniversary moving. The rent was cheaper. Four flights up, if you climb over the trash cans. We got finished moving, we went out for a walk all the way to that bridge over the Harlem River. Well, I know what you're thinking, darling. Oh, gee, there must be something we can do. Yeah, like what, for instance? Oh, well, now, don't get sore. You're right, Susie. And I, I've been thinking. There's no reason why you got to want supporting me like this. Now, you cut that right out. I, I've been thinking about getting out of town, hitting the road. Maybe I could pick up a job in, in Detroit, Cleveland. Oh, uh... you make me so darn mad. <laughs> okay. I won't go out of town. Susie. Hmm? Did you think I forgot today? Forgot what? Our anniversary. Oh. A lot of guys do, you know. I don't mind, Bill. What do you mean you don't mind? I <laughs> I got hold of a little money and I, I figured... Where'd you get it? Oh, picked it off a tree, simple park. Bill, you sold your toolbox. I, I just hawked it. Well. Well, it's our anniversary. What are we supposed to do? Sit home and look at the toolbox? I got your present, Susie. It's not much, baby. But here. Gee, it's a bracelet, Bill. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, it's... Hey, wait a minute, I've been robbed. There's a stone missing. That's nothing. Yeah, but... But look, there's another one missing. Oh, it doesn't matter. There's still... Eight stones. That's a lot of stones. Here, put on my wrist. Gee, it's got a slide fastener and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a little stiff or something. I, I, I can't seem to... Will you put on my other wrist? Well... What for? Well, my right one I use a lot, and it might get in the way of things and get broken. And my, my left arm, well, I don't use it so much. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, Bill, it's charming. It's just what it is. It's, it's just charming. Uh, this darn fastener. Oh, Bill! Oh, oh, Susie, it just broke apart just like that. Oh, the stones, Bill, they fell all over the pavement. Oh, well, well, I'll get them. You look over there, I'll go. Oh, oh my head. Oh. <sighs> Happy anniversary, Bill. Oh, same to you, baby. Come on, let's go home. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Just a moment, we'll return with the third act of From This Day Forward, starring Joan Fontaine and Mark Stevens. Our guest tonight is a young lady who literally sailed into a picture contract. She's Miss Nan Leslie, rated as one of RKO's most promising actresses. And I'm going to ask her to tell you how she did it. Well, Mr. Keeley, sailing is my favorite sport. Someone snapped my picture at the wheel of a boat, and it appeared on the cover of a national magazine. An RKO executive saw it and offered me a screen test. Pretty exciting, eh? I was thrilled, of course. But I wanted to finish high school. I began to study dramatics after school hours. A year later, when RKO again offered me a test, I jumped at the chance. And here I am. Well, what pictures have you done lately, Nan? Well, I had a part in Sister Kenny. A small part, but how exciting to be in the same picture with Rosalind Russell. Mm, that was luck. To be in one of the big pictures of the year. It uh, proved especially lucky for me. For in my next picture, The Devil Sums a Ride, I was given the lead. Oh, well, congratulations. We'll be watching for you. And we'll see a very lovely new star. We're not surprised, Miss Leslie, that a photograph of you led to your first screen contract. If I may say so, that Lux complexion of yours looks mighty photogenic. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I've been a Lux girl for a long time. I've always known Lux was Hollywood's favorite beauty soap. So naturally, I wasn't a bit surprised when I found out that Rosalind Russell depends on daily Lux soap care, too. And what a complexion she has. 
Yes, we're proud that Rosalind Russell is one of the nine out of ten famous and beautiful stars who use Lux Toilet Soap regularly. Thanks for reminding us of that, Miss Leslie, and clear sailing to you. Lovely women everywhere trust their precious complexions to fine white Lux Toilet Soap. Why don't you try it? See if you're not delighted with the gentle, cherishing care it gives your skin. And here's another tip. You'll find Lux Toilet Soap makes a delightful daily beauty bath, too. The rich, creamy lather leaves skin so fresh and sweet. Makes a girl sure of daintiness. Screen stars say they love Lux Toilet Soap's flower-like perfume. A delicate fragrance that clings. Here's your producer, William Keeley. Our curtain rises on the third act of From This Day Forward. Starring Joan Fontaine as Susan and Mark Stevens as Bill. It's a few minutes later. Still in the office of the U.S. Employment Service, Bill Cummings has just come before the interviewer, Mr. Brewer. Well, it was like I was saying, Mr. Brewer, I finally landed a job. It wasn't much. But if you knew how we scrambled to find the dimes and the quarters and the dollars to get my toolbox out of Huck, you'd, you'd know what the job meant to us. And after that, you went to work in a war plant? Yeah. All of a sudden, there were jobs for everybody. <laughs> Even Hank. We felt so darn good about it. We almost forgot it didn't mean prosperity. It, it meant war. The plant's closed now. Cigarette? Oh, is it okay? Oh, cool. go ahead. Oh, thanks. But your job was a good one, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was fine. Except for being on the night shift. That isn't on the phone. You didn't like the uh, night shift? Oh, night shift's okay. Yeah, sure. For a single man, great. For a married man, well... It got so when I'd get home, Susan would be asleep, and when Susan was awake, I'd be asleep. It, it, it was like we were strangers almost. Bill, darling, there's liver and bacon in the icebox. A low on bread. Now, P.S., if you see my husband, tell him I miss him. Couldn't get bread. Got rolls. I saw your husband. He says he misses you too. Love. Bill, is that you, Bill? Hey. Hey, what are you doing up? Oh, I guess I was just dozing. Did you just come in? Yeah, but... Now, look, baby, it's five o'clock. Well, I was waiting for you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Well, Billy, for three weeks now, all we've been doing is leaving notes for each other. I never get to see you. Well, Susie, you, you can't stay up till all hours just because I happen to work at night. Well, how else am I going to see you then? Well, we've just got to accept the fact, that's all. Come on now, get to bed. <laughs> accept the fact? That's too sensible. Listen, when you have to work all day, you, you can't do without sleep. Oh, I can manage. Now, that's just it, you can't. Where are you going? Wash up a bit. Ah, you just got to stick to a routine, that's all. Don't like routine. So I work at night. So I have to get used to it. You, uh, in bed? Uh-huh. Nobody can do a job without sleep. I know I couldn't do mine. Thousands of people work at night. I was beginning to forget what you looked like. If I didn't get my sleep, I'd fall flat on my nose. Anyway, I got a job, baby. And a good one. In a little while, maybe I'll get shifted to days. I sure hope so. Meanwhile, we... Hey... Where's my towel? Susan? Oh, never mind. I'll get one. You know, honey, I... I'm kind of glad you did wait up for me on account of I, uh... uh Susan? Oh, no, no. Sound asleep. Oh, rest well, baby. I'll be seeing you one of these days. Yes, that you, Miss Dixon? Telephone, Mrs. Cummings. I think it's your husband. Oh, at this time of night? Oh, it's all right. We were still up. Should I tell him to hold on? Oh, yes, please. I'll be right there, Miss Dixon. He's coming now, Mr. Cummings. Hold the wire. Oh, thank you, Miss Dixon. Hello, Bill. Susie, say, I got wonderful news for you. A raise? No, not a raise. I got two weeks off with pay. I can see you again. <gasps> two weeks? With workman's compensation. Oh, Bill. Got my hand caught in the machine and busted a finger. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> What 
What time will Mrs. Dixon be back? Oh, just a few minutes, Bill. She only went to the drugstore. Why, that kid sure got a pair of lungs. I, I didn't even know Mrs. Dixon had a baby. Well, if his crying bothers you, I Oh, can... no, no, I don't mind. Well, that's how they get their exercise. I, I told her we'd be glad to take care of her baby while she came back. Say, uh, what do you suppose he weighs? Oh, I, I don't know. He's awful heavy, though. <laughs> how old do you think it is? Oh, I guess almost a year. Oh, golly, Bill, I... Gee, I hope Joanna has red hair, too. She better have. You know, Martha was saying the other day she got a lot of the kids' clothes left over from when they were babies. We could use those. Oh, uh, well, well, if we had a baby, where'd she sleep? Oh, there's plenty of room in the bedroom for crib. You'd have to quit your job. Well, I wouldn't have to work. Well, you make enough now and... Oh, gee, Bill. Oh, Susie, supposing we had a baby. Supposing it had come last winter when I was out of oh, work. Oh, we'd and... have managed. I suppose you'd gotten sick. Oh, we'd have managed. I don't know. Gee, when I was a kid, we were really down and out. I want everything to be right for our kid. Well, maybe we'd be lucky. Maybe if and when Joanna comes, why, we'll be able to give her all the things we want her to have. Yeah, if we're lucky. Maybe if things keep going the way they are, maybe next spring, huh, Susie? Oh, yes, Bill, yes. On the form, Sergeant, you don't list any children. No, we only talked about a baby, Mr. Brewer. We never did have her. You see, a few months later, the draft board said they wanted to see me, and bang. Just like that, I was in the Army. Bill, what are you doing? you got to hurry. All of all mornings for the alarm not to go off. Well, what'll they do if you're late? Oh, I don't know. Court marshal me or something. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to fix breakfast, and I'm not going to let you out of here without you. Bill. Well, what's the matter? Bill, I told you last night, I told you there wasn't any food in the house, and you, you wouldn't let me go to the store. Oh, so skip, but... Hey, what are you crying for? Oh, I'm not, but there isn't any sugar in the milk sour. Oh, Susie, Susie, it doesn't matter. You're going to be inducted without your breakfast. Well, the Army will give me breakfast. Oh, but I wanted to get breakfast for uh, okay, you. Okay, then we'll have coffee together. I'm getting like black coffee. Bill, stop bleeding. I, I just cut myself shaving. I... Uh... Where's my styptic pencil? Your what? My styptic pencil. You know, when I cut myself shaving, I... Bill, I threw it out. You what? I was cleaning up, and I saw some things you didn't want. At least I didn't think you'd ever want them again, and I threw them out. Oh, you <laughs> threw it out. Oh, Bill, it wasn't that I was in a hurry. You make me feel as though it was, but, Bill, I was just cleaning up. Oh, it's all right, Susie. It, it's just a little cut. Come on, now, give me a kiss. Oh, Bill, oh, Bill. Hey, the time. Oh, it's 6.25 already. Oh, keep calm, baby. They'll call you a deserter. Never mind, I'll make it for... My sweater. Oh, your sweater, your... Oh, here it is. My papers. Your papers, yes, and, and here are your papers. Bill, you're going to have your coffee. I haven't got time, baby. Bill, the army wouldn't want you without your coffee. Oh, okay. I'll get the guts and sit down now. Wait a minute. Bill, the coffee. Huh? I oh. forgot to turn it on. <laughs> oh, Susie, Susie. Darling. What am I going to do without you? Just take care of yourself, do you hear? Goodbye, darling. Oh, no, you're, you're... See you later, baby. See you later. Experience with the tank repair outfit overseas, Mr. Brewer. Same kind of a job a foreman would have, only, well, maybe a little more responsibility. You did, huh? How long? Nearly two years. Good night, Sam. Now, good night, Charlie. Well, I can't promise you anything, Sergeant. Yeah, I understand. But with your experience Coming and background. Uh, see you downstairs. Uh, don't get up, Sergeant. There's someone I want to phone. Good night, Mr. Brewer. Uh, good night, Miss Helmer. I hope he's still in. Uh, uh, hello. Mr. Garrity there? Thank you. Look, I, I don't want to keep you. You've been swelling. Hold I... on now. Uh, hello, Garrity? This is Sam Brewer. Still looking for that foreman? Well, I've got just the man for you. Good. What's that? 
Okay, he will. Much obliged. Here's where you'll find Garrity. Take this card. Be there in the morning. It's just an interview, Sergeant, but he won't fill the job till he talks to you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Brewer. Good luck. I'm sorry to have kept you so long. Not at all. That's our job. Let me hear from you. Oh, if you're going downtown, I... No, I, I, I got to go uptown. Thanks, though. Susie's sister, she's moving today. Uh, the one you called Martha? Yeah. She and Hank and the kids. It looks like they're finally going to get their chicken farm. Well, thanks again, Mr. Brewer. Hey, Susie, give me a hand with the sofa, will you? Susie, no, don't you dare. Huh? What's the matter? Can't she eat? Well, I guess we'll have to tell him, Susie. Yeah, I guess so. Hank, I'm going to have a baby. What? You, a baby? Mm -hmm. Susie, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Hank. Hey, Ma, Ma, you know what? She's going to have a baby. Another one? Not Martha, Susie. <laughs> hey, Susie, does Jake know? Nobody knows. I'm Daddy... going to tell Jake he's down helping the movie. Oh, man. everybody will know now but Bill. <laughs> Gee, I wish he'd get here. Hey, Martha, tell me, what's it like? It isn't easy, Susie. Well, the doctor said I was born to have children. The doctor never had any. <laughs> you just hang on to one thought all the way through. The first time you hold that kid in your arms, you forget everything that happened. And right away, you want to have another one. Hey, Susie, what you gonna call her? Johanna. Jo Johanna? Hey, Jake. Johanna. What's the matter, Susie? Don't you like kids? Oh, you. When are you gonna move the icebox? Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Take it easy. Now, look, Susie. Anything you want to know about babies, just come to Hank. I can tell you all about it. Oh, yes. Hey, you can always... Oh, Bill, in here. Sure looks like you're moving, Hank. Hey, Bill, you heard about Susie? She's going to have a baby. Hey, what about the gas stove? Oh, hello, Bill. You got a job yet? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't you hear what I was just talking I got an about? interview for the morning. Ah, interview. Oh, gee, that's swell, Bill. Certainly it's swell. You'll get a job, okay? An interview. I tell you, it's all politics. And in a politics. few years, you'll be buying a farm out in Jersey just like me and Martha. Susie, about the baby, well, I... I just saw the doctor... Bill. Listen to Hank, talking about a farm. The guy's without a job. He's got a wife and now a baby to support. What's the matter? Ain't you got any faith in the future? But, Susie, I... am just I... saying, this isn't any time to be making big plans. It's true, Bill. Why the doctor it? said that we're going to have how a baby. You, how do you know what's going to happen next? How do you know there won't be another depression? How do you know the world isn't going to take another nose down? I don't know who Don't does. you put your finger in my face. Ah, oh, you're just like Papa was, me. Rest in peace. Just look at Susie. Worried to death, aren't you? No, I'm not. And him, look at Bill, just back from fighting the war and without a job. No wonder the guy's sunk. Listen, stupid, give him time, will you? Time for what? How's he gonna eat? Where's he gonna live without a job? He'll get a job this year. You was unemployment office. It's a great thing. Sure, sure, but they can't find your job if there isn't any. Am I right or wrong, Bill? You tell me if I... Hey, where'd he go? Hey, Bill. Uh, Bill. Susie, where'd they disappear to? They're gone, see? Try and get a word in edgewise with you experts, both of you. Now, I'll give you two minutes to get that icebox on the truck. Sure, Martha, sure. Come on, Jake. I think there's still a bottle of beer in that icebox. Looks just the same, doesn't it, Bill? Our bridge and our river down there. Water is still shiny as ever. Susie, you're sure the doctor couldn't be mistaken? No, Bill. You said you were going to be all right? Oh, yes, Bill. You, you're strong enough, aren't you? Couldn't be healthier. Well, it, it sure looks like I better get that foreman job when I see him tomorrow. Foreman? Oh, Bill, that's wonderful. Yeah, you better get it. Bill? Yeah. Scared? Yeah. Oh, Bill. Sure, I'm scared, honey. But there's nothing wrong with being scared. Why, we'll be scared lots of times. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. Huh? Where? I don't see any stars. There aren't any, darling. We don't need them anymore. Our hearts go out to Susan and Bill as they face the future. And our thanks go to our stars themselves as they face the footlights. Joan Fontaine, and Mark Stevens. Joan, we're especially grateful to you for hurrying back from New York to take part in tonight's show. I wouldn't have missed it, Bill. Were you in New York on uh, business or pleasure, Joan? No, just a vacation and some shopping, Mark. Well, you deserve a vacation. 
after your splendid work in Paramount's production of The Emperor Waltz. Incidentally, Mark, I understand your latest production weighs 11 pounds and looks like a Stevens. <laughs> How is the new baby, Mark? Well, I'd say he was a howling success, John. <laughs> I imagine it keeps you pretty well pinned down. Well, we keep him pretty well pinned up. <laughs> Does it call you daddy yet? No, uh, my wife isn't telling him who I am until he gets a little stronger. <laughs> well, if it were a she, you'd have to introduce her to Lux Toilet Soap. Don't tell me you use Lux Soap as a baby, Joan. Well, I use it faithfully, Bill. It's a wonderful complexion care. Well, from a girl with a wonderful complexion, that praise indeed. What's the good word for next Monday, Mr. Keeley? Next Monday night, we have a treat. Not only for those who love exciting drama, but for those who love great music, too. It's Republic's brand new screen hit, I've Always Loved You. Starring a great favorite of this theater, Joseph Cotton. Along with uh, Joe is Barry Sullivan and that brilliant discovery of the screen, Catherine McLeod, playing her original screen role in a deeply moving drama featuring some of the world's finest music. Sounds like a triple hit, Bill. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. And all our thanks from this day forward. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Joseph Cotton, Catherine McLeod, and Barry Sullivan in I've Always Loved You. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. We all know there's a soap shortage. It's caused in part by the worldwide shortage of fats and oils used in the manufacture of soap. Industrial fats are used also in the manufacture of many other necessary items, such as automobiles, refrigerators, washing machines, paints, and textiles. That's why it's still urgent for American housewives to keep on saving used kitchen fat. True cooking fats of all kinds are short too, but with the increasing meat supply, you'll find it easier to fill your fat salvage tin. Don't waste a single drop of the precious fats so vitally needed to step up production of the household goods we all want and need. Save every scrap. Put the used fat in a clean tin can and take it as quickly as possible to your butcher. He will pay you for every pound you turn in. American women have been doing a wonderful job of saving fats and oils, two of the most essential materials today. If they will continue to save, they can help immeasurably in speeding peacetime production. Mark Stevens appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of Daryl F. Zanuck's The Razor's Edge. Heard in our cast tonight were Eddie Marr as Hank, Ann Stone as Martha, and Leo Cleary, Norman Field, Charles Seal, Herb Butterfield, Noreen Gamil, Howard Jeffrey, Norman Nilsson, Thomas Mitchell, Cliff Clark, Dorothy Scott, and Alan Lockwood. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our Lux Radio Theater production of From This Day Forward has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's own beauty soap, the complexion care used regularly by nine out of ten lovely screen stars. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, Reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear I've Always Loved You with Joseph Cotton, Catherine McLeod, and Barry Sullivan. Spry on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Yes, it's Spry for tender, flaky, nut-sweet pastry every time. Make that next pie with pure all-vegetable Spry shortening and hear him say... Mmm, wonderful. The reason why... For all you bake and fry, rely on Spry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of I've Always Loved You with Joseph Cotton, Catherine McLeod, and Barry Sullivan. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>